Hi everyone, and welcome to HR with Brenna, a video series I host helping business owners unravel the complexities of HR so they can build the business of their dreams without all the headaches. So today we are going to talk about HR audits. So before we talk about how you actually do an HR audit, we're going to talk about why they're important. So it doesn't matter if you are brand new to HR or you have been in the business for 20 years, there is a good chance there is something that you have missed or something that you're not thinking of or something that could just improve the processes you already have in place. Taking that time to step back, take a holistic view of your HR function is only going to help you, your business and your team. So doing the HR audit is going to help you to ensure legal compliance, reduce the business's potential liability it's going to help make sure that the policies, the procedures, the things that you have in place are still aligned with the business objectives and make sure that you're still meeting the needs of your team. So the first question is, can I do my own HR audit? And maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on what you are specifically looking to accomplish. If you just want an internal self-assessment tool that you can review your current processes, policies, procedures, compliance, to make sure that there is, is nothing you are missing that is going to be of significant liability for your organization, then sure, you can probably complete one on your own. If you are looking for that external perspective, external viewpoint, someone to really go through with a fine tooth comb and make sure there's absolutely nothing you're missing and to be able to provide you some supplemental best practices, that's when it might make sense to engage a third party. So, how do you do an HR audit? So th there's gonna be a few things this is going to involve. One, there's gonna be a lot of data collection and data review, but you're gonna primarily operate off of a checklist. If you wanna see what one looks like, we have a sample link down below, so you can take a look at that just to get some ideas. But really, we're gonna to wanna to walk through the entire employee life cycle. There's obviously gonna be a big emphasis on compliance. Uh, you're going to review policies and procedures against state regulations but being able to look at everything that the employee experiences from the initial attraction recruiting phase all the way through when that employee is exiting your organization. Every step along the way has certain elements that should be reviewed, compared against the checklist for both compliance and best practices. You're gonna come away with a lot of things that you're doing well, and you're gonna probably find some things that you can improve on, but that is gonna be your best place to start. So what should be on this HR audit checklist? As we discussed, it should cover the full spectrum of HR um, from the basic compliance through alignment with the objectives of the business. Uh, you'll want to make sure that every step of the employee life cycle is covered as well as basic compliance, payroll benefits. There's a lot of information that is going to be collected and reviewed in this process. A couple things to keep in mind. You're going to want to make sure that any nuances of your business are covered. So do you do government contracting work? What states are you in? Of, are you in states that have some more complex regulations? What does the business look like down the road? What growth do you anticipate? Are you moving into new locations, states or countries? Keep all of these things in mind as you are building out the checklist to make sure that what you are reviewing is the most relevant and helpful information for your business. So we've talked a lot about HR audits. You are probably either really excited to go out and start yours or you are absolutely terrified. If you fall into that latter category, it might be time to call a third party to come in and help you get started. Now, even if you are excited about doing it, uh, bringing in a third party can still help. Typically, that outsource provider does a lot of audits or assessments on a regular basis, which means they're already gonna have checklists, templates, and a lot of experience to draw from to make sure that this is positive and impactful experience for you and for your team. We will frequently do an HR audit or assessment with our clients at Milestone. Uh, what that looks like from our end is we're gonna sit down and first have a fairly detailed conversation with the person who is handling the operational, uh, tactical elements of the HR function. Sometimes that's the business owner, sometimes that's a current HR professional, sometimes it's no one. Uh, then we're going to collect a lot of data, review policies, job descriptions, benefit plans, so that we can get a really full picture of what the function has, what it's offering to the team, and where some of those areas of improvement might be. Then we're gonna sit down with the business owner, the CEO, the COO, someone who can really provide insight into the business objectives, the long-term strategy. Because it doesn't matter if you are doing 
your HR assessment or audit on your own, if you are engaging a third party, if you don't have alignment between the plan that you are building and the long-term objectives of the business, then you're looking at a lot of wasted energy and effort. In summary, regular HR audits, whether you are conducting them internally or externally, are a crucial part of maintaining an efficient, effective, healthy HR function, which is key to maintaining a thriving compliant workforce. Thank you for joining us today as we talk about HR audits. If you have any questions or want to talk about it more, you can comment down below or reach out to me directly.